<laughs> in today's video, I'm going to show you what's in my case. Let's get started. I'm going to move you to the couch. Okay. So before I even open my case, I want to briefly talk about the case itself. It's a GL Combi case. I got it probably eight years ago. You can see how beat up it is, but I absolutely love it because my violin always safe in it. I had cases before that I wasn't sure if my violin was safe, especially with so much traveling that I was doing and um i think it's awesome the only downside with this case is that it's so heavy i've tried some bend cases and they are so cool and i hope that someday i can buy a new one but even when i'll buy a new one i will never take that new case for traveling on the case we have um the name tag which i turned around for safety reasons but this um, name tag usually has you know my name my home address my phone my email in case my violin gets lost then i have this albino bag and i thought the years were matching the tag i don't know why i have it here but it brings me joy and also if i'm ever in a house with puppies um, they like to chew on this but also kids they also like to chew on this so i wash it very often <laughs> thing that I should add about this case is that it does have pockets for the front and for the back of the case. I just never use them because it's already so heavy to carry it that if I add those things that it really hurts my shoulders. If you ever consider buying it for the sake of how durable it is and how safe your violin will be in it and also because it gives you extra space for your music and for some things i love this case i just want to have a second case i don't know i feel like a person who like has a very nice car and i would like a different one that's like for the city <laughs> So, first when we open my case, we see two bows and we see my beautiful violin. I can't really say much about this violin, but just that it's uh, loaned to me and I love it. It's the first violin that I'm playing that is so good and it truly has changed the way that I sound it changed my technique because there are many things that i don't have to try so hard anymore and also it changed me in general as a player like my reputation changed too because i do sound much much better now and well it's gorgeous i i love it then we have two bows one of the bows is a bow that costs literally like 50 dollars i've been having it since probably since i was like sixth grade or seventh grade i don't know when you change to a full violin the other bow is the bow that came with the violin which also it's amazing and i also hope to keep it for as long as i can um the th truth about musicians that cannot afford their own instruments is that we switch a lot between instruments and that is okay as long as you find something that's very comfortable to you and that you think it's worth changing for. Next, I have my shoulder rest. This is, I don't even know what shoulder rest this is. I'm putting money aside to get a better one. I played for a long time without shoulder rest because I used to have this habit of pushing my jaw into the violin and over years it sort of became a very painful experience like my jaw would go numb so to be able to get rid of that habit i moved to no shoulder rest so i used to have like a very tall chin rest to be able to you know have a compromise but um then i got back and i put this on 
and mainly because it was playing a piece that was on the G string all the way high. So a lot of times when I would play there, my violin would slip and that was freaking me out. So I moved back to shoulder because that shoulder rest because that way it was giving me some balance. Then I never went back. So I'm playing with a shoulder rest now. Then we have my white towel. I usually have way more than one there for cleaning my violin. I clean it once a month, I think. Um, not the violin, the towels. The violin gets cleaned every single day when I use it. I think it's very curious how sometimes you will see musicians, not musicians, I'll just talk about violin players. You'll see violin players that they will have this like rosin on the violin that's already like stuck to it and gooey. And that already tells me about their like commitment to the instrument and professionalism because a professional would never, never have dirty instrument. It's just, you can't, it's too expensive. It also shows that you're not cleaning it from your strings, which also prevents your bow from producing as much sound as possible. So I teach my students very early that like, you gotta clean your violin, you cannot walk with your violin dirty, no. This one, um, I have way more of these. I change this every two weeks and it's usually cloth to protect my neck when I'm playing. I'll show you. So I usually take it and place my violin. I always perform with these. I used to have black ones because um, it matched my attire for the uh, working shop performances was like so cool to have everything the same until I realized that it was staining my violin a little bit right then instantly I moved to like the cleanest cotton tissue possible I'll see if I could link below all of these things it might take me a while to find because some of these were gifts but I'll make it work we have two humidifiers and these are amazing, especially if you are in sort of very humid area like I am. For example, when I go out, it's extremely humid. When I go back in the house, it's usually really dry because of the AC. I find these very useful. I change them probably. You usually check. If you push and the water is not coming out, it's really hard. That means, you know, there's not enough water water to create the humidity necessary for your instrument and i'll also make like a little tutorial on how to use this i kid you now when i first bought this i just took it and i put it in my violin because i never read the instructions and a month later i saw one of my friends like put it above the sink and getting water and i was like what are you doing why'd you do that and um that's when i learned i wasn't using these correctly um yeah shame on me I just washed these humidifiers and then I take a towel, take them one by one through the towel so that way when you put it in the violin there's nothing wet to damage the violin. To be able to see if, oh the camera is here, if it's truly with water you just push and see how water is sticking out. She's all good to go. This cute tiny pocket that is attached to the violin. This one in itself has so many goodies. So um, first we have uh, rosin and this is the rosin that I'll probably use for the rest of my life too or until I drop it. That's what usually happens. I don't think there are many musicians that actually use their rosin until like it was worn out and that's how they got a new one. It's because you usually drop it. Then I have this little pouch with a lot of old strings that I want to donate. There are like several websites that you can donate to your string, which is really cool because then they can go to lots of public schools for little kids that are just starting their instruments so they don't need like, fancy strings. 
Then we have Fair Strings. This is the brand of strings that I use. I've been using these for the past five years and I don't plan to change. I think they create a very soft tone and very warm. I know that there are so many strings in the violin world and I wish I had the chance to try them out all, but because they are so expensive, I don't think that it's worth even trying. If I'll have a teacher that will tell me like, wow, like you sound pretty good, but like if you want to, first of all, I don't think there will be a teacher that will tell me, wow, you sound pretty good <laughs> because I'm usually uh, working with teachers that are roasting me daily. And I think that's the only way I can make progress. If they would tell me like, wow, Talitha, you need to get these strings. It's gonna make you sound so much better. Then I'm gonna switch or just like try for a week or two. But at the moment, violin strings are very expensive. Cello strings are even more expensive. Guitar strings are not so expensive. You should Google that. If you're a violin player, Google how much our guitar strings compared to ours. That will make you feel really bad. But we have a little cute band-aid. I keep these with me because I have bad habits. Wow, I really need to clean this. Then I have earplugs. And I have this because often in an orchestra, depending on where you're standing, for example, as a violin, you can be right in the front, as a concert master, assistant concert master, or even second, stand as you're pretty far away from woodwinds and brass but sometimes if you are first violin in the back or even second violin honestly any spot in the second violin especially a little in the back you can be right in front of french horns and right next to the piccolo so in moments like that earplugs are super important tool to have because tinnitus is serious like you guys tinnitus is real <laughs> don't don't mess with your ears um if something's really loud if you feel like there's a moment in the piece when it's like really loud you can feel in your body the movement of the sound do get earplugs then i have this very dirty towel that's gonna go to trash i also have this sort of thing and it's from the time when I was playing with a rubber band, I wanna touch it. That was literally the only thing that I was having when I was playing without shoulder rest. And it was amazing. I'm still keeping it because if I would see that a habit is sneaking in, I would just like move back for a week. I will play without shoulder rest so I can get back to having good habits. I have so many strings. Some of these are new, I think, all of these ones have to go and the reason i have this kind of brand i never used it that's what my violin came with when i first got it but never tried it before so no i went back to these <laughs> next i have very important a hair tie this lives in my violin and I don't give it to anyone. If somebody comes to me and says, like, hey, do you have an extra? No, I don't. One more extra pencil. I have this, I don't know how you call this, but it sort of protects your violin. You sort of put it on this area. I don't play with it. Some people even perform with it, but I think that we should be able as musicians to control our bow. Sometimes when we have certain chords or certain like technique with our bow that we have to create and we're not sure yet, I would feel like I usually put it on because I do not want to chip this area off. So far, it's been an amazing tool and I really love it. Lastly, we have three types of mutes. Um, we have a baby one that's usually great for the orchestra. This is my spare one. My main one lives on my violin. I know this is not very good for the sound, but I haven't, I don't want to change it yet. I like how sort of while you play it's like the fastest mute ever like while you play you just put your finger here you slide it and then you move it back you don't have to do this movement of like okay i'm taking it off and putting it on the other two mutes this one is great too if i'm ever traveling and i need to practice in a hotel that's what i usually put on after people ask me to be quiet these are not good for your sound in general but i think it does the job of not um, being too loud 
Then I have this mirror. I only took it as a fun experience. Makes the sound very metallic and very uncomfortable to listen to. I do not like that. There are two more things that are left. This one is very good looking lipstick, huh? It's not a lipstick, it's called... Um, It's the original hill composition for pegs which have ceased to turn smoothly to be applied sparingly. <laughs> it's such a fancy instruction. Well, this is for the pegs and you know how sometimes you like turn it and then it turns back uh, without your permission, it just does it on its own. Then you put some of this and then you sort of, it works. Another trick. It's important for you to know if the pegs don't turn anymore, just try to go back and then turn it. It usually helps. Last thing in my case, old school tuner. I love this thing. I think it's at 440, it's not at 442, um, which is fun. It's just like some orchestras prefer 442, so it's nice to have a phone app where you can go back and forth between these. Oh, I wanna show you how it works. So if you do this, Like, do you hear it? And then hearing that, that's how you tune. It's really cool. I love it. Okay, that's pretty much it. That's everything what's in my violin. Um, thank you for watching this video. Let me know what strings do you use. I'm actually very curious what strings you use and why you love them. And also, is there something in your case that you have that I don't have that you think that might be useful or inspiring or just like cool to have. Well, that's pretty much it. Bye bye and I'll see you in my next video.